the Lord, Pastor Matt, had asked me to preach a while back, and I didn't realize that it was Father's Day. And last, a couple weeks ago, I started thinking about, Lord, what do you want me to say? God, what do you want me to say? And I'm like, I'm not a man. I'm not a husband, and I'm not a father. <laughs> so how do I express to the people anything that really has to do with Father's Day? And the Lord said, Angela, I am your father. Yes. I am their father. So express my heartbeat for my children. Yes. Express my heartbeat for them. Yes. And I said, okay, I think I can do that. Yes. So the Lord gave me... Isaiah 54, verse 17. Isaiah 54, verse 17. And it's a very familiar passage. Pastor Matt came up here and I thought he was going to start preaching my message. And I was like, man, Pastor Matt, because he was talking about the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous run into it and they are safe. There's, there's safety and security in the arms of a father. Yes. Yes. There's safety. You can feel secure as a child of God in the arms of your father. You know, um, my, my father passed away, and I have an amazing stepdad, and I know he's watching right now, so I just want to say Happy Father's Day. Yes. Um, but I have a heavenly father that knows all things, yeah. that knows even more than our, our earthly fathers know, that he knows what comes before, he knows what comes after, he knows how to give power, he knows how to reach the deepest part of your heart when, when no one else can, he knows how to comfort, he knows how to bring peace, he knows how to bring security. He knows how to provide. He can provide manna from heaven even in the desert. That's our heavenly father. Our heavenly father is a good, good father. He's a good father. And he gave me this scripture. And it says, no weapon. No, I'm going to say that again. No weapon that is formed against you. Amen. Make it personal Amen. this morning. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment, you shall condemn. Yes. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Amen. That's a word from God. Yes. Yes. That's what it says, says the Lord. Mm. And when the Lord says something, mm -hmm. it is true. And it does not return void. Yes. And it said that this is your heritage. Hallelujah. And I was like, okay, Lord, you're our father. You have an everlasting love. And this is our heritage. What is a heritage? Something that is properly inherited. A person's unique inherited sense of family, identity, values, traditions, and culture. When we inherit something, as we have inherited the kingdom of God, our values should become his values. Mm -hmm. Our ways should become his ways. His possessions now become our possessions. Amen. Do you understand what you have been in, you have inherited as a child of a king, as a child of God? Because he sent his son, the only way you really receive legally an inheritance is when someone dies. The, the father sent his son on your behalf, Mike. So that you could inherit it. Happy Father's Day, Mike. Um, so you can inherit um, the kingdom of God. Yes, yes. So you can inherit power from on high to overcome. Sometimes maybe we feel inadequate in our lives or inadequate even as fathers to run a household, to run a family. But God can give you super 
supernatural power and wisdom on how to run your family. Some of us maybe don't have husbands or don't. We have to fulfill the role as the father and the mother. Well, Sabrina, God gives you supernatural wisdom and power from on high on how to run and operate and do that. And sometimes we can feel like I want a father for my children. Well, you have the best father for your children. And he has the best possessions. He has all the land. Well, how can I provide? He has all the land to give you. He has everything he needs to give you. And you can access that through the blood of Jesus Christ. There's an inheritance that you have. Your identity is in him. Your identity now is in him. You have inherited the king's identity. So everything that is his now is yours. See, sometimes I don't think we really get, I don't really get that. I'll tell you this, and I know that this is a word from the Lord because we left Sabrina's house on Friday. No, actually, this started on Wednesday. From Wednesday to today, I had one of the greatest battles of my life, and it was very dark, and I couldn't even express it to anyone. I couldn't even express it to Naya because it was within there, there is a battle from within that was happening. And you know what? I just had to know I have a good father who is watching out for my best interest. And he's not going to let me go. He's not going to forsake me. He's not going to leave me alone. I have an inheritance. I have a heritage. It is legally mine based on the blood of Jesus. Your inheritance was written just in the blood of Jesus Christ. It's yours. It's yours, Toya. Everything you need is yours. The comfort that you need is in your inheritance. The deliverance that you need is in your inheritance. The freedom that you need is in your inheritance. The power that you need is in your inheritance. The peace. Yes. That, yes. The peace yes. that you need yes. is in your inheritance. It's all by the blood of of Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. And I asked my teenagers and my, my little kids, because I teach both, I said, well, what is an expression of a father? What would you say is a father? And these are some of the things that they gave me. A protector, a provider, someone that is strong, someone that loves God, someone that is kind, someone that is funny, so we got some funny fathers in here. Someone that is giving. Someone that sacrifices. Someone that is courageous. Someone that stands for truth. Wow. Someone that is bold. Someone that has muscles. That, that made me laugh. Um, someone that takes care of our family. Someone that goes to events for them and cheers them on. Someone that helps them when they fall down. Someone that teaches them. Someone that talks to them. Someone that is understanding and loving and shows thankful, thankfulness. Someone that is faithful in giving their tithes. I thought that was cool. I know, and it showed me that they're watching. I mean, they're talking about you giving your tithes and offerings. They're watching. Someone that hugs. Someone that comforts them when they're hurting. And I was like, wow. You guys have some awesome fathers. Yeah. And then I began, I said, okay, God, that's what they see. That's what they see. That's what they see in you. Yes, okay. I want to encourage you this morning yeah. that that's what they see yeah. in you. They told me that. I didn't pull that out of them. That's what they said. And, and then I began to say, okay, Lord, well, what's your attributes? What do you look like as a father towards us, his children? Someone that is loving, kind, compassionate, giving. These are all out of strict scriptures. Faithful, merciful, strong, forgiving, good, righteous, caring, sovereign, shepherd. Some, I like this. An attribute of the Father is he's ever-present. Yeah, yeah. He's ever-present. He never leaves us. And he's attentive. Yes, yes. He is a good father. He is a refuge. I don't know about you, but my dad, he was like superhero of the world. Like, it didn't matter if he didn't. Let me tell you.
tell you this. It didn't matter if he did right, wrong, or indifferent. He was still my hero. He was still my hero. So I want to encourage you, even if we've made some mistakes as fathers or mothers, okay, of a household, our, the kids still, they look up to us and think, well, you're a superhero. You're a hero in their eyes. You are, he, he is our healer. He is powerful. He is one who saves and one who helps. He is one who makes all things new. He is one who makes all things new. He's going to make it new today. He's going to make whatever you need new today. Whatever's been going on, he's going to make it new today. He is a restorer. He is a repairer. He wants to do a work this morning. And he brought me to this scripture. And I'm not going to go through all of the background because you know how I get stuff on the background. And I was like, you always preach from the background. I'm like, but it's so good. But I do want to say this because I've seen the heartbeat of a father. The main purpose of this book of Isaiah was a warning to Judah of the sins that would lead to their downfall. Mm. There are some things in our life that could lead to our downfall. Right, right. And a good father yes. would protect his children. So a good father isn't going to allow us to go in a direction without quickly grabbing the hand of his child. Yeah. If I was crossing the street and my father was with me and there was a car coming that I didn't see, I guarantee he wouldn't just let me cross the street. Right, right. He would lay hold of my hand and pull me back. Well, the conviction power of the Holy Spirit... Thank God for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. That's his hand saying, come back. Yes, yes. Come back this way. Don't go too far that way. Don't go this way. And that's the heartbeat of the Father. He is warning us. I am protecting you. Amen. 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 And um, how many times, Zeth, have your parents maybe told you no and you didn't understand why? But it was a protection. Mm -hmm. Right, Lucas? <laughs> it was a protection. And that's what the Lord does. Sometimes we don't understand why he says yeah. the things that he does or why we have to do what he said to do or why he doesn't want us. Okay, how many of us when the Lord says no we, and we don't understand why? You look like one of them children. Mm -hmm. I know for me, look, I'll put myself out there. I am the queen of temper tantrums in my heart mm -hmm. when the Lord says no. I don't understand why, why not, Lord, da, 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 da. and I look one, like one of those two-year-olds kicking and throwing themselves on the ground. I know my mom's watching. She's probably laughing because I know I used to do that. Mm -hmm. But you know what? The Lord is protecting us from our own downfall. He's a protector. But not only is he a protector, but he also made a way through the redemptive work of Christ. So not only would a father tell us when we're wrong and redirect us, but he would make a way for it to happen. I guarantee if Pastor Matt knew that his girls needed something, he would go above and beyond whatever it took to make it happen for his girls. Yes. And that's what the Lord does with us. He made a way beyond whatever it took to make it happen for us to receive what we need from him. Amen. And not only that, but he is a creator. See, he's not just our earthly father. He is a heavenly father. So he can create what you need. That's right. He is a king. You are the child of a king. Yes. Yes. He is a redeemer. He is an everlasting father. He is a father that doesn't slumber and he doesn't sleep. That's right. Hallelujah. So we see the heartbeat of the father in the book of Isaiah. And I want to say this, that his a love of a father, our father, is eternal. Amen. Amen. And his covenant to you is based on love. When he, I'm talking about unconditional love. That when he went to the cross, when he sent his son to the cross for you, that that was an unconditional, sacrificial type of love. That's the kind of love that our father has for us. So whenever you feel unloved, whenever you feel lonely, whenever you feel like
like you've messed up and you've gone too far. Remember the greatest expression of love was expressed on Calvary when God sent his only son for you. When you feel like you can't make it, remember Calvary where God sent his only son for you. And I want to turn to Isaiah so it's going to all play out here in Isaiah 54, verse 1. If you would turn there with me, I want you to be able to follow me. I know I'm at no weapon formed against me shall prosper, but I'm going to paint a story for you. Isaiah 51, verse, I mean 54, verse 1. Isaiah 54, verse 1 says, Sing. And that's what we're doing this morning. Oh, barren. You who did not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who did not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. And when you look at that, you could be like, what is happening here? Well, I'm going to explain. <laughs> Sing, O barren, you who did not bear. Sing. I'm like, if you... If you're going through something and you feel empty and you feel barren and you don't see a way out and you don't understand and this is something someone that is impoverished they're poor they're desolate they're empty they're void okay I know that feeling even in Christianity see we're real life Christians talking about real life Christianity okay and you can feel a void you can feel an emptiness as we're walking this walk out well, what was the answer? The answer was to sing. Well, what if I don't feel like singing, Lord? Right, right. I know some of us walk in here on Sunday mornings or even throughout. I, I don't want to sing, Lord. What is there to shout about, Lord? What is there to sing about, Lord? Well, I want to tell you this, that when we begin to express who God is through song, yeah. see, this is the house where idols fall. Okay, you, we might have walked in this house this morning, and there was an idol risen up in our heart, but guess what? When you begin to declare who God is in song, God will begin to stir up a faith within you. God, I know Sabrina didn't, didn't wake up this morning and say, I'm going to walk around the church this morning with no shoes on, shouting to the Lord. She didn't wake up saying that. But as she began to sing and allow the Holy Spirit to touch her heart, whatever she might have felt this morning began to dissipate. And she began to believe the words of the song because they were declaring who God is. This is the house where dead men yes. walk. Yes. See, if you feel dead this morning, if you've seen a dead situation in your home or your household, this is the house where dead men walk. And there's been times I've come to church. I haven't wanted to come to church. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're preaching and you didn't want to go to church. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Right. Yes, I did. I, there's times I don't want to read my word. There's times that, because you know what? The enemy comes in like a flood. But God raises up a standard by the power of his blood. But we're still human. And we still deal with emotions. And we still deal with other people's emotions. And we still deal with a battle in our mind and different things. But you know what? What does the scripture say? Sing, oh you barren. And what's that word sin means? It means shout for joy. Rejoice in triumph. Well, I don't feel very triumphal this morning. Well, he's already triumphed yes. over everything that is attacking you this morning. Amen. Over that oppression that can't break off of you this morning. It's going to go in Jesus' yes. name. Off that depression that is settled in your soul. It's going to go in Jesus' name. Over that anxiety that continuously tries to grip you. It's going to go over those doubts and fears that come up. Is my child going to make it back to the kingdom of God? Is this going to happen? Is what's my future hold? All these different things. Amen. Sing. Yes. Sing, O oh, E. Barren. Oh, See, yes. the state of barrenness didn't change. But the song and what you believe Glory. can change. Glory. See, we can be 
consumed by our circumstance. We can be consumed by the barrenness. They could have been consumed with the desolateness. Their situation didn't change. But further on it says, break forth. And that meant praise break. Sometimes you got to have a praise break. Sometimes you got to get in the house and start dancing. I think I told you this story one time. One time I was teaching, I was a kindergarten teacher, and I was having a really hard time, and this is in New Jersey, and I was going through it, y'all, really going through it. And in my classroom, you know that those little instruments like kids use, like the maracas and the tambourine and the egg, and you teach the little kids? Well, one day I was going through it, and I go into my classroom. It was like off the co- to the corner, and I'm in there with one of the ch- children's tambourines, and I'm in there shouting to the Lord. Because, uh, look, you have to get yours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what God has for you, nobody can go get it for you. Amen. I cannot. Look, I can't give Naya what I get from the Lord. I can, Naya can't give me what I, she gets from the Lord. I mean, we can encourage one another, but I'm talking about a move of God, Toya, in your heart that only he could do. And I'm in there shouting and praising and Jericho marching with my little tambourine acting a fool in front of the Lord. And then I start writing on my on my kindergarten board the promises of God. And I'm shouting the promises of God. And I'm believing God to move. Well, all of a sudden, Naya peeks through the window. She, she found out where I was. And she, she walks in the room. She's like, Angela, what? are you doing? And I was like, I'm believing God. I'm believing God to come through. And God met me in that kindergarten classroom with my little tambourine stomping my feet, shaking my head, and believing God. Sometimes you got to get along with God. And and get in your car. Okay, or sing in the shower. Or whatever you got to do. Just get in your prayer closet and begin to shout. And you're like, well, I don't know no songs. Okay, open up your Bible and begin to shout the word of God. Begin to proclaim the word of God. I'm talking about everyday Christian living. Begin to believe God. Amen. See, break forth, see, oh, you barren, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Yes, yes. I love this song. There's a song that says, praise before my breakthrough. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard it before, but these are the words. I know the tension of the now. I don't always understand I don't always get to see everything. I'm holding up my hands when I'm counting every breath. Lord, all all I know is you choose me. I want you to know that God chose you. God chose you. Troy, God chose you. He chose you. He chose each one of us. And it says, I'll praise before my breakthrough. See, there's got to be a praise that accesses faith and then God begins to move. Yeah. I will praise, but come on, sometimes we don't want to. God, I don't have it. I don't have it. But you know what? Tell the Lord you don't have it because he'll give it to you. God will even give you your praise. He'll give it to you. And it says, till my song becomes my triumph. Mm. Sing it till you feel it. Yeah. Preach it to yourself till it begins to happen. Yeah. Believe it and receive it. Yes. See, there's a there's an exchange taking place. Amen. Amen. God, I'm going to praise you before I see it happen. Mm. And the word, the song continues on. I will sing because I trust you. Not because it looks good. Not because it's happening, everything's happening and it's right. But because I trust you. you, Because I trust. If he sent his son to Calvary for you, how much more can you trust him? 
He is trustworthy. Amen. He hasn't failed me yet. Amen. I mean, he might have not have done it the way that I thought he should. <laughs> but thank God he did it. Sometimes I look back and I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus, you closed those doors. Amen. Thank you, Lord, I didn't go that way. Amen. Thank you, Lord, even in my ignorance and yeah. not knowing. Thank you, Lord, in my willful disobedience Amen. to what you had told me. You still kept me Amen. because I trust you. I will bring my heart. I will lift my song. When I'm listening for your voice and I'm shutting out the noise, I know that you will speak clearly. Sometimes you got to get away from all of the noise and sit before the Lord and listen for his voice. And if you can't hear him, open up the word of God and he will speak Amen. to you. And it will be clearly. You will know. And when I'm living out my faith, when I'm stepping on the sea, I know you will take my hand and walk with me. He's going to walk with you every step of the way, every moment of your day. He is walking with you. I will praise before my breakthrough. I will, my song becomes my anthem. I will sing because I trust you. I will bring my heart and I will lift my song. Listen to this. He who came in power, he will come again. He who came in power the first time, I thought to myself, there was no greater power than when the day that I got saved. If he could save you from where you were and the condition that we were already in, the sinful state that we were in, how much more power can he give you to live for him? Amen. 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 That's good. He who came in power, he will come again. He who heals the sick, he will move again. He's going to do it again. He who raised the dead, won't he raise it again? We were dead in trespasses and sin, and he saved your soul. So if you feel dead this morning due to circumstances or situations, or your situation looks dead, or something's going on, won't he do it again? Yes, he'll, he'll do what he said he was going to do. Yes. Hallelujah. You, God wants to do more with you Amen. than you could have ever asked or dreamed. God wants to do with you, talking to fathers, as a man of God and with your families, more than you could ever ask or dream. Yes. That's your inheritance. That's your heritage. That's what you're going to leave your families one day. The eternal weight of glory. I mean, everything else is going to burn up. So it's like, how much more do we need to take care of our children and the things in the kingdom of God. How much more do we need to feed them the eternal word? How much more do we need to show them this is the way, walk in it? How much more do we need to show them? I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about sharing. When you're going through something and you're on your knees and here comes Aubrey walking in. Mommy, what are you doing? I'm crying out to God. Things might not look good right now, but I'm believing God. That's what we need to show them. That's what they need to see. Because that's what's going to get them through. Yes. Yes. Not the car that we bought them. Even though that's great. Amen. Not the, the things that we gave them, but what we gave them in the spirit. Hallelujah. The hope that we gave them in the spirit. Mm. How are diamonds made? I thought this was really cool. In the mantle, diamonds were birthed within the deep of the earth. 62 miles down. Where temperatures are hot and pressures are high. Have you ever felt like the temperature is hot in your life? That you are in the fire? Or the pressure is so much that you can't bear the weight of it? The conditions for a diamond to be made are necessary. That they can be bound together. The atoms can be bound together. This way, diamonds will eventually...
actually be the result. See, sometimes God has to go deep. And he's got to bring us deep. And he's got to bring us through some deep things. And he has to allow the fire to be turned up. He has to allow the pressure to be upon us. Because he's making and forming you into something. Right, right. He's forming, the pressure is forming you into something. Something of his glory. And this place is a result of a diamond. Mm. And I liked it. And it says that it is three-dimensional. Dimensional. I was thinking about the power of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All three in one. Working within you. And it says, if left to grow without interference, produces large, pure diamonds. Without interference. See, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. There might be a whole lot of interference on the outer court. But if you hide yourself in Christ and you believe the word of God, there is no interference that's going to take away from the diamond he's producing in you, Jess. From the diamond of his his character that he's producing in you, Troy. Just keep going, my friend. Just keep going, Amanda. Just keep going, Mike. Just keep going, Robert. Despite the pressure that might be put on you, he's producing an exceeding way of glory. He's producing something that your children can see the glory of God in your life. That's what we want them to see. And then you know what happens? A volcanic eruption and throws the crystals to the top of the earth. And I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. We need a powerful move of God. We need something that is greater than ourselves for his character to be produced in us. And then it comes to the top of the earth where others can see what he's done in you. But that work a lot of the time is happening in your barrenness, is happening in your hurt, is happening in our mistakes, is happening in our pain. But as we're singing through and worshiping through it and trusting through it and believing through it, he is producing something in you. I want to encourage you today that he's going to enlarge your borders. He's going to enlarge looking past Israel's mistakes. Israel at this time were sinful. Israel at this time has made a ton of mistakes. And I'm not a parent, but I can only imagine having that relationship with my children. And when I make a mistake, I feel bad. But when somebody else is watching, how you feel about that. But what I love about this is that God doesn't leave us there. He fixes us. He fixes the situation. And your children can watch us make mistakes and that God can still fix it. That God can still restore it. That God can still renew it. Because guess what? Our children are going to make mistakes. And their children are going to make mistakes. And they're going to have to see that we serve a God and a Father that is so loving that he doesn't quit. Yes. Amen. I have watched Pastor Matt love his girls so much and never quit. Yes. Amen. Never quit. Maybe get frustrated, but never quit. Amen. And he continues to believe and trust and believe. And God wants to enlarge the place of your tent, your borders, what he gives you. But God isn't going to enlarge you until he knows that he can trust you with what he's already given you. That's right. Amen. Thank you. Faithful in the little things, he will make you ruler over much. Be a good steward of what we have now, and he will make you ruler over much. And then the scripture continues to go on in Isaiah 54 too. It says, strengthen your stakes. And I was like, what does that mean? But strengthen that which keeps you rooted and grounded. What holds your family together? Mm -hmm. Strengthen your relationship with God. Strengthen your prayer life. 
Strengthen yourself in the word of God. Strengthen your stakes that it will hold your family together even when a hurricane hits. Mm -hmm. Even when the floods come. Yeah. You strengthen your stakes that you could strengthen your family. Yeah. I need to strengthen my stakes that in my household, what I'm responsible for, that when the floods come, I'm strengthened in that. Through all that you have faced, God is strengthening the very framework and foundation of his relationship with you. Mm. And then it continues to go on in Isaiah 54, 4. It says, fear not. And I need to hit this verse and I'm going to. It says, fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded. For thou shalt not be put to shame. Amen. For all the shame, for all, all the shame of your youth shall be forgotten, and shall not remember the reproach of thy widowhood. Fear not has to do with Israel. When you realize that you have made a mistake, sometimes there can be a fear that tends to overwhelm us. Yeah. But God says, fear not with his comfort and his protection as a good father. When we mess up, when we make a mistake, willful disobedience or just ignorance, the Bible says, fear not, you shall not be put to shame. See, as a father, he covers the mistakes of his children. He's going to cover you. And he's not ashamed of you. He's not disappointed in you. He doesn't look down from heaven and say, Oh, Amy, that Amy. He doesn't, he doesn't say that. He's not disappointed in you. But as a loving father, he's not just looking at you and saying, I just want to punish her. I just want to punish him. No, he says, I want to show them a better way. I want to show them a way of life. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in such a way that they're going to forget all the mistakes that they made in their youthfulness as a Christian. Yes. Okay, we might have made some mistakes as a teenager, okay? And yes, God's going to cover that. But I'm talking about in our walk with the Lord, right. in our right. youthfulness in the Lord. Sometimes we can tend to make, even as, as older we get in the Lord, we make mistakes. But God said, I'm not ashamed of you, and I'm going to cause you to forget all that you have done. Every mistake that you have made, I am going to wipe it away as though it never happened, as though it never were. You don't have to be ashamed of me working in you. You don't have to be ashamed of you learning. A father doesn't get upset with his child when they're learning how to walk and they keep falling down. He just comes along, picks the child up. Come on, let's keep going. Okay, fell down again. Come on, let's keep going. Amen. Fell down again. Oh, come on, let's keep going. He doesn't get frustrated with the child when they're learning how to eat, when they're learning how to walk, when they're learning how to talk. That father doesn't get frustrated. And we are growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. You are growing. You are in the growing stage. We are in a growing process. So I think we might get more frustrated with ourselves yeah, yeah, and yeah. condemn ourselves more than the Lord does. Right. We look at our own faults more than the Lord because he's, he, all he's about is restoring yeah, you. Yeah. All he's about is picking you back up. All he's about is loving you. And you know what? Yes, if a toddler goes to touch a father, fire, the, you, the father's going to slap that toddler. Don't touch that. Don't touch. Don't go there. Don't say that. Don't act like that. But it's not because he's ashamed of the child. Right, right. It's because he, he's protecting that child. Yeah. He loves that child so much that he doesn't want to see the child get hurt. And then sometimes, you know, we're willful. I'm one of those. I'm going to touch it. <laughs> I'm just going to see a little bit. <laughs> and you know what? We end up getting burned. Yeah. 
I got burned this morning. I was I, I didn't even curl my hair either. I know, but I got burned this morning, and it hurt. That hurt. And sometimes we do things that we're going to suffer the consequences of. Mm. See, God's telling us one thing, and we might not listen, and we're going to suffer the consequences of it. But what I love about the Lord is he doesn't leave us in our consequences. Amen. Like he wants us to learn from it and travel through it. Troy, I'm sure you, you teach the kids what how they're going to go in life and what they're going to do in life and which way to go in life. And you don't get upset with them as they're learning and as they're growing. You want to see them prosper. Right, right, right. Pastor Matt, you want to see your girls prosper. Right. Robert, you want to see Elijah and Esther prosper. I know the heart of the Father is to see his children prosper. Yes. And sometimes I, I'll be the first one to say, God, do you really want me to prosper? Prosper, what is going on? I don't see it, Lord. But he does. He sees all things. So I want to encourage you. You shall forget the shame of your youth. As though it never were. Hallelujah. And verse Isaiah 54, 13 says, And all your children shall be taught of the Lord. And great shall be the peace of your children. What is our inheritance? What is our heritage? What is our inheritance? One of the greatest things that we search for in life is love, yeah. peace, mm -hmm. and fulfillment. And this says, Isaiah 54, 13, And all your children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. Part of God's covenant agreement with his people was peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. A peace that transcends your circumstance. You might still be in it. You might still be facing some giants. You might still be seeing some things that aren't quite right in our lives yet. But God can give you a peace when you're hurting. God can give you a peace when you're going through it. God can give you a peace when you don't have money to pay the bills. God can give you a peace when your car breaks down. God can give you a peace when no one else is there and you feel so alone. God can give you a peace when we mess up. God can give us a peace that surpasses all understanding. In John 16, 33, it says, These things I have spoken to you, that in me, you, in me, in me, you might have peace. But in the world, you should have tribu tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You can find comfort in knowing that you have a power within you that is greater than yourself to overcome every obstacle that is placed before you. You can have peace in that that surpasses all understanding, knowing that he has overcome already for you. That bondage he has already overcome. That resentment, that hatred, that Peer pressure, the pressures of life, he has already overcome. You can have peace in that. You can have peace knowing that he has your future in his hands. You can have peace in that, knowing where the next meal is going to come from. You can have peace knowing that your children are going to come back to the Lord. You can have peace in that. And it says, all your children shall be taught of the Lord. That's should be our goal. <clears throat> that we learn ourselves and that we teach the next generation. <laughs> we learn ourselves and that we teach the next generation. Isaiah 26, 3 says, If you keep him, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Because he trusts in you. See, our father is a keeper. He just doesn't want to just give you peace. He wants to keep you in peace. Yes. Amen. He will keep that which is committed to him. Yes. Let me say that again. If you have committed your life to him, he will keep you yes. if you allow him to. To keep means to guard, to protect, to maintain, to conceal, and to hide. 
Isn't that a father to guard, to protect, to heal, to hide, to conceal? I want to be someone that protects our children in prayer. That conceals who they are, to, to protect them and conceal them, to hide them under the shadow of his wings. I want to protect and guard our children with the things of God and the word of God and teach them the ways of God. Because in this world, we will have tribulation. They will face some things. They will grow up and face the things that we have faced. And it's only getting worse if y'all are watching. Mm -hmm. And we want our children to have what they need to stand and to have peace Amen. and not run to other things to look for that peace. Amen. And these are the words that Jesus spoke when he lifted up his eyes to the Father in heaven and said, The hour has come. Glorify your Son, and your Son also may glorify thee. The job of a father is to glorify the Son See, we should be glorifying the Father. And as we glorify the Father, He's going to glorify His Son in us. Yeah. And that's what other people are going to see. Our family shall glorify the kingdom of God. That's what we were declaring. I will declare that, that our families will glorify for me and my house. That's what Joshua said at the end of his life. He said, for me and my house, I shall, we shall serve the Lord. Yes. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. No Never, nothing, no, never, nothing, no weapon, not any weapon that is formed against you. A weapon is something that causes pain. A weapon is something that is used to cause harm, whether physically, mentally, emotionally, a weapon is meant to achieve destruction in your life. Mm, amen. No weapons. Zeph, come here. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Move it. <laughs> no weapon. Yup, all the way up. Stand in front of the camera and get a good shot. Come on. Come on. No weapon. Here's Zeph. A believer. No confusion. Anybody ever been confused before? Yeah. No anxiety. <laughs> no traps of the enemy. No jealousy. No society. What society says is acceptable. <clears throat> Nothing of the world. No suicide. <clears throat> no drugs. <clears throat> no alcohol. No doubt. No hatred. Thank you, Lord. No fear. Yes, yes. Amen. In the middle. <laughs> All of these things and many, many more right, right. are weapons that have been formed against him. What does it mean to form something? To prepare it. To implement it. To use it as an instrument. To get him off course. But no weapon that is fashioned and formed against you, against your family, shall prosper. Amen. Why? God, I'm going to show you. Love. Mm. Grace. Yes. Yes. Forgiveness. Hallelujah. I know my handwriting is horrible. Sorry. Mercy. Yes. Yes. Glory. Power. Protection. 
Yes. Mm. Freedom. Wisdom. Yes, yes. Grace. Hallelujah. See, no weapon can penetrate yes. when we are in Christ, mm. the Father's character. Yes. Yes. See, all these things can be happening around That's you. Right. They try to get you all. of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Every tongue. Troy, you got a birthright, brother. You have a birthright, and this is your heritage, Naya, Amen. that nothing that comes against you, it was finished at Calvary. Amen. And every tongue, and I looked this up, and it said every lying spirit, Every condemning spirit, every spirit that would come to bring you guilt, to bring you shame, to make you feel like you're not good enough and you're not worthy enough, that you're not loved enough, that you're not accepted enough, that you've gone too far. You live, see all that lies on the outside? Yeah, yeah. It says every tongue that rises up against you. See, nobody even has to be saying anything to you. It could be all right here, all right here. Right, right. I told you I had a four-day battle, and it was not out here. It was all in here. Yeah, yeah. Every tongue that rises up 
against you, you shall condemn. Tongue can be an evil and deadly poison. To rise means to stir you up. You ever get stirred up about something? Everything that comes against you in opposition, you shall condemn. Know that it is wicked and declare it as wrong. It is not truth. Amen. You shall know the truth and I, if you will come up, the truth shall set you free. If you would stand with me this morning. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God in the pulling down our strongholds. I don't know who needs this this morning, but if you need to stand in the gap for your family or for yourself, if God, if God has been speaking to you this morning and you need some things restored and renewed, if, you, if you've been in a battle and you need the Lord to hide and conceal and cover you, if you need to know his love for you this morning, I ask that you would please come and believe. Believe the Father. Believe the Father. Believe the Father. 